I was university in Manchester. I had intense stomach pain. I went to the nearest medical clinic and they said, okay, it's sickle cell disease. It's like acid is running through your body. Instead of blood, it's acid. And the longer it happens, the worse it gets. The pain intensifies. It's mentally draining, it's physically draining. There's been times where I've been in constant pain for over a week and it just really does get you down. Sickle cell disease is a genetic inherited disorder. The disorder occurs as a result of abnormality in one of the proteins within the red blood cell. And this protein carries oxygen. That defective protein changes the structure and the function of the red cell itself, meaning that the red cells are more sticky, so they block the blood vessels and stop oxygen getting to the tissue. The only tissue that is starved of oxygen, it gives rise to pain. In sickle cell disease, painful crises are probably the worst pain imaginable. The vast majority of sickle cell patients, particularly within the UK, are of African and Caribbean descent. I think as a sickle cell doctor, you try to do your best for your patients. You advocate for them. But we do all of this with pretty much one hand tied behind our backs. We don't have the armaments, the tools, and as a consequence, it makes it very difficult. So at the moment, the treatment for sickle cell disease are extremely limited. The vast majority of treatment options requires a special type of blood transfusion. One of the other options is they get pain relief to get their pain under control. My focus is making sure that patients get the best chance in life. What we need is other treatment options that can manage sickle cell disease. My sickle cell affects me from day to day. But if I'm overexerted, if I'm doing too many things, I'm prone to have a sickle cell crisis episode. And if I don't rest, then it's going to get worse and worse and worse. When my daughter was born, I was hoping she didn't have it. But finding out that she has the most severe form, it did really put me down. The fact that we found out early made sure that she had everything in place. With Angel, she had to have two life-saving blood transfusions. She puts up a good front, but I can see that it physically draining. I'm from the beautiful island of St. Thomas in the United States Virgin Islands. And it was there in seventh grade that I learned about sickle cell disease. When I went home to my parents around the dinner table, my dad said to me, oh, we think you might have the trait. When I learned I was a carrier of sickle cell, it helped me to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. The work that I do here at Vertex is really focused on people living with sickle cell disease and helping them to transform their lives. For more than a decade, Vertex was focused pretty much exclusively on cystic fibrosis. But as we began to have success and then had more resources to deploy, we said, what other serious diseases could we reinvest to be able to make a difference? And the first one we chose was sickle cell disease. At Vertex, two thirds of our people work in R&D and two thirds of our budget is in R&D. What's really remarkable about Vertex is we'll figure out what the underlying biology is to address, and then we will bring whatever technology is needed to try and make the biggest benefit for patients. We actually want to change the course of the disease so that people can live a longer and healthier life. Researchers for years have known that once a baby is born, the body makes a transition from expressing fetal hemoglobin to expressing adult hemoglobin. The disease will only manifest itself in adult hemoglobin. And so our strategy really involves learning as much as we can about the disease and then identifying the right modality to be able to affect change. It requires a tremendous amount of commitment, of innovation, of collaboration, to try and help develop together a new solution 
that didn't exist previously. Nothing could be more motivating than that. My main hope is for her to live a healthy and prolonged life. And my hope is a brighter future, not just for me, but for the future generation of sickle cell patients moving forward. If there's one thing I'd like people to know, it's that having been a doctor and a scientist for 40 years, there's actually been remarkable progress. When I look back at what the problems were when I was training 30, 40 years ago, and I look at where we are today, I can't believe the progress that's been made. And so that gives me a lot of hope for the future.